Hello. I want to continue in this video from where we left off with our test data, where we put our data into a two line per stem, stem and leaf, and we calculated our five number summary. Now, the stem and leaf can be considered a graph of our data. And a second graph I'd like to show you, which I find very helpful, is a dot plot. Now, for the dot plot, I need a number line. And I need to increment my number line from the minimum value to the maximum. So we'll go from 60 to 100. And as best I can, I want to equally increment. So say 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So it's important that I equally increment this number line to go from my lowest to my highest. And now all I'm going to do, and all I have to do, is plot my points, which are plotted above the number line. Every point is plotted. So when I have more than one of the same, like I've got 376s and 287s, I just put the dots on top of each other, like this. Let me show you. So I've got a 62. I've got a 64. I've got a 65. Okay, we come up to a 71, a 72, a 73, a 75, and I have three 76s. So one, see I'm going above, two and three, and a 78. I've got an 81 and an 82. 81 and 82, an 85, and then two 87s. Again, notice one on top of the other. I've got two 90s and a 92, and then I finish with a 97. So here's my dot plot. I like the dot plot for the same reasons I like the stem and leaf, that it shows each individual score. I like the stem and leaf because it shows me the patterns. As I mentioned, we quickly see we've got a group here. We've got a group here. But what's really cool about the dot plot, it shows us very clearly how the data are clustered. So you'll notice this score is the fleet leader way out here by itself. And then you can argue what you wanted here, but it almost seems like you've got an upper cluster, and this group, you've got this cluster, and here at the bottom of the barrel. So a professor in looking to assign grades might say, well, if the professor is going to be kind of strict, you could say A, B, C, D. One way you could do it. Okay. You might say A, A minus B, B minus C, D. That would be another way. But the important thing to mention is this. The dot plot and the stem and the leaf, in my opinion, are the two best graphs we can use to represent the data because it shows each individual score and tells us something about the data. Now, another thing that's very clear would be the shape of this data, because we can see that this data is not symmetric. It's not bell-shaped. Bell-shaped data would look like this. And this data is not bell-shaped. But rather, this data is skewed. This is bell-shaped. Bell-shaped is also called symmetric. And this data is neither bell-shaped nor symmetric. This data is skewed. Now, skewed data is either skewed to the left or skewed to the right. Left or right depends on which side appears to be stretched out. 
So if it's stretched out to the left, we say it is skewed to the left. And if it's stretched out to the right, we say it is skewed to the right. Looking at this data, I would be inclined to believe it is skewed to the left. And left skewed would have this kind of shape to it. This would be left skewed. versus right skewed that would have this sort of shape to it. And this would be right skewed. So my guess is that the data we have here is left skewed, which simply means there are some scores at the left pulling things down. More on how we would determine that in a future video. What I want to do now is produce a second graph that's called a box plot, or in some cases, a box and whisker plot. To do that, though, I first have to check to see if I have any outliers in my data. So I'll take my calculator, and I'll make some room. So what I'm going to do is to use my interquartile range, which we found to be 16, to see if there are any outliers. And I have to calculate a number, and that number is 1.5 times my IQR. It is always this number. So that would be 1.5 times 16. Well, 1 times 16 is 16. Half of that would be 8. 16 and 8 should be 24. So this number should be 24. Let me just double check. I'll take my calculator, and 1.5 times 16 is, sure enough, 24. Now what I do to that, I set up two uprights, just like you'd see on a football field. And I'm going to determine these points. Now I find these points by taking Q1 and Q3. And what I want to do, I'm going to take Q1 and Q3, and I'm going to spread them out. And all the data that fit inside those uprights are OK. And any data that fit outside would be considered outliers. So Q1 is 72.5. So I'm going to take 72.5. I will subtract 24. So. I get 48.5, 47.5, no, 48.5, 48.5. So that's this lower end. To get this upper end, I'll take 88.5, and I'm going to add 24. Because again, we're lowering the bottom and extending the upper. When I add 24, I get 112.5. 88.5. Add 24. 112.5. 72.5 subtract 24, get 48.5. Now, since none of my scores fall outside of this range, there are no outliers in this data. So now I'll construct my box plot. Once again, I want a number line. And I want to equally increment from my lowest to my highest point. So this is my number line, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. And I'm going to locate my five numbers and use those to construct this box plot. My minimum is at 62. My first quartile 
is at 72.5, my median is at 77, and my third quartile is up here at 88.5, and my maximum is up here at 97. So now, to finish the plot, I construct a box that represents the interquartile range from Q1 to Q3. I construct a whisker from Q1 to the minimum and from Q3 to the maximum. And this is my box plot. And the box plot gives us a quick visual of our data in 25% pieces. Here's the bottom quarter. Here's the middle 50%. Here's the upper quarter. Here's the bottom half. Here's the upper half. Here's the bottom 75%. There's the upper 75%. So the box plot gives us a very quick and easy way to graphically represent the data. Now the stem and leaf and the box plot, these two structures were created by a statistician by the name of John Tukey. John Tukey. He invented this stem and leaf and box plot as ways to quickly summarize and analyze data. John Tukey. And he reported these developments in a book that he wrote called EDA, which stands for exploratory. data analysis. I hope you enjoyed the video. More to come.